Welcome back to Plants and Light. I'm Farmer Tyler. Today we're going to cover the first fundamental of horticultural lighting, photo period. Photo period is simply the duration that a light is on during a day. So it's how many hours of light is a plant exposed to each day. Photo period is incredibly important to flowering crops. Not all flowering crops respond to photo period, but there are two main groups that do. There's long day plants and short day plants. Long day crops flower when they receive a long day, usually about 14 hours of light or more. Short day crops flower when they receive a long night. It's a little bit counterintuitive. You think, okay, short day plant flowers when it receives a short day, which it does, but it's actually the long night that makes it flower. Knowing that it's the dark period that really triggers flowering, you can manipulate this by interrupting the night. And that's what I did in this little demo. And it worked. On this side, I interrupted the night, and on this side, I didn't. These are all short day crops. Both of these sides received 12 hour photo period. There was a, a divider between them. But this side received one hour of red light during the middle of its dark cycle. And this side received one hour of green light during its dark cycle. Green light is really cool. It doesn't trigger a photoperiodic response, yet the red light does. And we'll cover how light quality can interplay with photoperiod in further episodes. Get off, get off. By manipulating photoperiod, you can control when a crop moves from vegetative to flowering. Vegetative being the stage when it's growing leaves and roots and just getting really big, and then flowering being the stage when it starts to flower. By increasing the length of the vegetative stage, you can grow a really large plant that has a lot of energy, so when you flower it, it can have a lot of flowers or grow a lot of soybeans or have a really big sunflower. This specific sunflower was studied by Cornell in 2008, and they did a study fairly similar, where they exposed some to short days right away and some to long days. The plants that were exposed to short days immediately flowered faster, which would be expected, but their flowers were smaller and their plants were shorter. This is because they didn't have a lot of energy in them, but they were told, they were given the signal, it's time to flower, and they flowered with whatever energy they had. The plants that were exposed to long days and then flowered had a lot of energy they had amassed during that vegetative stage. So the sunflowers grew really tall, the flower buds got really large, and they were more marketable. Let's say you are a grower that's growing sunflowers for a farmer's market, and you know that the Thanksgiving farmer's market is going to be super busy, you're going to sell a lot of sunflowers, and you need to have your sunflowers timed to flower perfectly so they're ready for that market. Well, you might start them vegetative early. You might go a couple months early and they're getting nice and green and they're getting big. And then a month ahead of the market, you know, oh, I got to start flowering so they're all ready all at the same time and they're going to look great. You shift to 12 hours you or you stop doing a night interruption and then you have your plants perfectly timed for the market. Controlling photo period for flowering crops is not only great for targeting a specific harvest date, like the Thanksgiving market example, it's also great for targeting a specific crop height. So in a grow tent like this, it's easy to run into a height limitation where you need your crops to flower before they get too high, which is pretty much what happened on this side perfectly. The sunflowers flowered immediately, so they didn't hit the light. But on this side, even though I'm gonna have some really nice, vigorous, tall plants that could make large flower buds, 
they're already touching the light, so they're already going to be too big. So there's a lot of ways to manipulate photo period for flowering crops to get what you want. Harvest date and crop size and flower bud size. And there's also an advantage for controlling photo period for leafy greens. One of the main examples of a photoperiodic responsive leafy green is spinach. Spinach will flower when it receives long days, usually about 13 hours or more. And a flowering spinach crop does not sell great. It ends up getting really tall, the leaves get small and bitter, it's sort of just gross tasting. So a leafy greens grower will also want to control photo period so they can have the best quality spinach. For a grower indoors using sole source light, there's a lot of other cool tools. There's the obvious timers, digital timers, analog timers, and light controllers, but there are advanced light controllers which can do some pretty cool stuff like sunrise and sunset simulations. Let's use an example of a short day crop like this sunflower that would flower when it receives 12 hours of light. Using a sunrise and sunset simulation, you can actually increase that photo period to about 13, 14 hours by having a sunrise in which the light slowly ramps up power uh, and slowly increases its intensity, and then having a sunset where it slowly ramps down its intensity. So by doing this ramp up and ramp down, you can still keep your plant flowering in its short day photoperiodic response, but you can actually add a little bit of energy to its growth. You're giving a little bit more photosynthetic light at the beginning and a little bit more photosynthetic light at the end, and all of that just can help increase the overall growth of your plant. This is a feature seen on the PX1 controller, which controls the Phantom 1000 watt double-ended high pressure sodium lights, which I'm using in both a greenhouse and I've also used indoors. And then there's programmable LED controllers, where you can not only ramp up and ramp down the power, you can actually manipulate the spectrum. These programmable LED lights have three different colors that can each be manipulated to further simulate sunrise and sunset. In nature, a sunrise and sunset have light that is shifted towards red. So you'll have a little bit more red and far red light than you might during the normal day. The ability to manipulate light quality, that, that light color, that spectrum, and photo period, and bringing these two fundamental factors of horticultural lighting together adds all these other opportunities to increase plant growth while still getting the desired results of having a flowering crop that's growing fast and producing a lot. All of the fundamental factors all have some interplay. So you have your photo period, you have your light quality, and then you have your light intensity. All of these are gonna interact. We're gonna get into these interactions and cover all the fundamentals in the coming episodes. And I, I hope you join me. This video series was made possible with support from Hydrofarm. In this episode, we saw a variety of timers. We saw the Autopilot PX1, the ActiveEye Green LED Work Light, Cap Light, and we saw the PowerPar Red LED and the Solar System 550. So many products to make this science real. Thanks, Hydrofarm.